Hey everybody, Kim here with Little Biz Resources, and today I'm going to talk about how I use Power Automate Desktop for Etsy images and mockups. All right, so the images, I need the images to be the right size for Etsy. So I'm going to show you how I make the images the size I want using Power Automate Desktop. In a follow-up video, I'll show how I make mockups with those images not using Power Automate Desktop. At least not yet. So what I am using is I'm using Photoshop, which is a paid version. I'm using Power Automate Desktop, which is free. At least it was at the time of this recording. I have scanned images and that's because I need specific sizes and I could only get that to work in Photoshop when I scanned the image instead of taking a photo. All right and then I also created an instruction sheet for myself which you may or might, may not need and that is in Word but that's just because it's on my computer but you could use you know Google Docs or whatever you have. Now I will say Photoshop does have some actions that you can do. Now, if you're familiar with Photoshop and how actions work, you know way more than me. There are plenty of things that you can do, but I've never seen and I purchased several actions and I haven't seen any that don't require me to at least push the button for each picture. So when I open the picture, I still have to push the action and I couldn't, I, and while I'm sure I could probably automate that with Power Automate Desktop, I'm, I'm doing this without having to create actions, right? So I didn't have to learn a second thing. Now with this method, I'm only telling Power Automate Desktop to start each step. So it's really easy. I just hit play. Now I do prep between steps for what I need, which takes, I don't know, a minute maybe. But you may not need to do this if you're just creating images for Etsy. And you'll see what I mean as I go through. And the problem that led me to Power Automate Desktop is that I was working in my Etsy shop. And I, I had two problems that I ran into. The first one though is I was working on my images. And I, well, I should say I got a text message from my sister and she said, um, what is this? And she sends me a link to the thing. I'm going, huh, that's such and such. And she goes, that's not what it looks like. And I said, you're right. It doesn't look like that. And it didn't look like that when I loaded it. So no matter what I did or how good the photos looked before I loaded them into Etsy, something was translating wrong. And I suspect, I, well, I, I say I suspect it was on the Etsy end, but it doesn't seem to do that as much when I took high quality pictures. So there's something, there's something translating wrong between taking regular pictures and then uploading them to Etsy. And in order for me to be able to get the images to look better on Etsy, I had to take super high quality pictures or scan the products at, you know, really high quality levels. And these ended up being too big for Etsy. And as you can see, this is one they're giving me notification where it's <laughs> needs to be under 10 megabytes. And I'm like, why I can't get it to look right. So that was the first problem was that when I took the pictures at the high quality, I needed to edit the size of every single image I loaded to Etsy. And you can see here I've loaded in the listing images from Etsy where it says the recommend, recommended size for listing images is 2000 pixels for the shorter side and a resolution of 72 PPI, which means it, that's the way it just shows up on screens for the most part anyway. So that undoubtedly that's where the translation was going wrong. And I'm like, well, if I can translate it first, maybe that will make the, the image look a little bit better. So that would mean that I need to edit every single picture and I had to take high quality pictures in the first place. The second problem stemmed from Etsy's push for videos. Now my products are a supply, right? They're a supply. So the only videos I could think of that would work for my products were inspirational ones that kind of showed how they, if you use the supply, what they might look as an end product, which meant I needed mockups. Now I use a software to create mockups so I don't have to use my product because sometimes I only have a little bit of my supply. So I'm like, well, I can't use my supplies to make stuff. Not only that, but that would take so much time and I don't know how to do it. So I said, okay. I'm going to use the mockups, but I needed the images on the mockups to be as close to realistic as possible so people could look at it and say, oh yeah, I can envision that, right? But that meant, this led to my second problem, I needed specific size images for the mockups. So I needed a specific size image and I needed specific dimensions and stuff for Etsy, right? Now I have over a thousand listings already. And I don't always post new products. Like I don't post every single day new products. I just don't have time for that. But when I do post products, it's usually I batch them and I put quite a few on at a time, you know, 30, 40, 50, 80, whatever I, I get around to. Now this meant a lot of time sitting at my computer editing images. And I can tell you that was a huge time suck for me, a huge time suck. 
So I decided to narrow this down to just one picture. So first of all, I was taking one, I think four pictures before is what I was taking. And I decided, you know what? Okay. I don't think that's as beneficial as it could be, especially when we're going to be doing mock-ups. So I'm just going to narrow it down to one image. And of course I decided to scan it because I needed those specific sizes. You may not need to scan images. So if you're like, oh my gosh, I can't scan my, myself. That's okay. Uh, you may not need to. Now power automate desktop is not, I'm not going to say it's super simple because it's instructions. You have to sit there. I mean, I can't even tell you like, you have to tell it step by step. You have to think about it as being, I don't know, for lack of a better term, stupid. Right? You have to say, hey, I have to tell it instructions even more basic than I tell my eight-year-old. Right, Even more basic than when she was two when I gave her instructions. She could infer things. It cannot infer things. So you have to go step by step by step by teeny tiny itty bitty step. Right, So I set up the instructions for each step in Power Automate Desktop, which we'll talk about or show a little bit briefly towards the end of the video. And I created my own flow based on my needs. So this is what's so great about it is that it's you can use a template probably, but it how it's how you need it you can set it up the way you want now if you're using this just for etsy you probably only need two steps and you'll see what i mean by steps in a second i have four steps in power automate desktop and that's so i can create two images specifically for mock-ups now let's see how easy the automation is so before we get to that part power automate desktop sped up my workflow in this area significantly i cannot tell you how much time it has saved me it would take me hours before Right? I would take the images, I would load them up to my computer, I would have to edit each image multiple times. It was time consuming. But Power Automate Pro cut that time in half, but even better than that, it actually kind of eliminated it. And the reason why is because I only have to sit in front of my computer long enough to get it set up and push the button. Right, So that could be the initial setup might be five minutes and then I let it run. And I go, since I go through four steps, I let it run one step and then I can come back and do something and then I can go to step two and et cetera. So I'll show you what I mean in just a minute. So I've only put a few pictures in this process so that you can see what, what I've put together. But imagine that when I'm doing this, I'm doing, you know, 20, 30, 40 pictures at the same, at, you know, at one time. And this is not necessarily the best way to do this. I'm going to admit, I am not a professional at Power Automate Desktop at all. In fact, my husband told me about it because we have been talking about being able to do certain types of automation. And he said, oh, hey, by the way, did you know that this is out? And I was like, no, I didn't. And we had been looking at something similar to it that would be, you know, comparable and all online and everything else. It was like 800 bucks a month. And I'm like, I am not paying that. I will just do my own images. I'd rather pay a VA to do my images than pay 800 bucks a month. So... That was, but you know, theoretically, you're replacing your VA by using automation and doing twice as much. And in this case, it's free. So I was like, oh, I'm going to give it a try. So I am brand new. I should say brand new. I've been playing with this for a couple months now, but I've been focused on this specific task because I wanted to do this. Power Automate Desktop is ideal for repetitive tasks. So something that you're going to do over and over and over and over again, right? And for lack of a better explanation, something a monkey could do. So if you have a task like that, this may be beneficial. Now, in this case, of course, I'm showing you how to use it for specifically for um, pictures, sizing the right pictures for Etsy. All right. So let's hop over there and I'm going to show you. So this is what, sorry, I have to, too much stuff on my screen. So this is what it looks like and you can come in and we'll, we'll go dive into this a little bit more towards the end. But for this first part, I have step one and I have to, because my computer is like seven or eight years old and yours may not be, uh, if yours is, is um, newer, then you won't have as many challenges and it could go a lot faster, right? So I had some challenges. I had to go in there and make things take longer. And the one thing was is that Photoshop takes forever to open on my computer. So because of that, I have to open it in advance. So I've done that. I've opened it. And for my steps, I have to set up because I, I don't know the short codes, I should say. Since I don't know the short codes, I can't put the instructions in here to do that. So my step one is prepped already. So I'm just going to go ahead and play it. And hopefully it will show on the correct side. Do, do, do. And it does take a couple seconds to get going. So see, now it's pulling up the image in Photoshop. 
And like I said, this is where you may cut down on some time because my computer is seven or eight years old and it takes longer to do things, to process things. And if yours goes faster, then you can, you can cut some. So when it opens, I have to give it some time and then it saves, it does the image size and say, you saw how fast that was, right? You saw how fast that was. That was fast. So that's, you get to think about how fast that goes compared to how, if you were doing it manually, even if you're just saying, Hey, here are the steps. I'm going to batch my work. Right. So this is going to be, they're going to do a second one. And then it's going to, it's going to do what it needs to do. And then I think there's a third one too. Now I separated out each of these because there's different sizes and that's because I don't know the short codes and you can, I'm using short codes, by the way, the only way I could get this to work was with short codes. My brother and I were both playing with it and we could not get it to function correctly when we were trying to use their um, UI, their user interface stuff. And so instead I just did short codes. So it's doing, and that's, so because it's doing that and for the most part, you can't do anything else while you're doing this. Right, you just have to let it run, which, by the way, is not a bad thing, right? Getting up and getting away from your computer, not a bad thing. And so what I like to do, or at least how I envision this working, and this is actually the last one, so I'll show you the next step, and then I'll tell you what I envision. All right, so that was the last one, and you can check by going, and so what it does after that is it moves folders for me. So you can check, see, you saw that it was highlighted right there, then it went back to here, now it's done. So now I can go to step two, but for me, I actually have instructions what I need to do is I need to come back into here and open a file. And this is because, again, I don't know the short codes to get this in advance or I haven't set them up. So the first image I did was an eight inch by eight inch and 150 pixels per inch. And that's because that's for one of my mockups. So this next one I'm doing is actually for Etsy. And so it's going to be per their instructions, 3000 pixels by 2400 remember they said a minimum of um 2000 and so we we meet that and then they wanted 72 here so we're, that's what we're going to do is we're going to do what they said there's it's over 2000 i found where this is the the correct ratio so 3000 by 2400 this is how it shows up correctly on etsy so that you map you optimize your image for viewing for other people now if you don't have repeating stuff like i do you might have to play with this, but this is how it was easy enough for me because it's repeating. So I'm going to go ahead and check mark this and close it out. I'm not going to save it because that's not what I'm doing, right? I'm just going to have, I'm just prepping it. So in this case, I don't want that to happen. This is why I check this because if it has to do it, if it can't do the steps in order, I want it to open and then I want to be able to push C, which that last one may have worked. But if it doesn't do the steps in order, then if it's not prepped in advance right, then it won't work, right? And then it'll get stuck and I'll have to start over on that one, on that step. Not a huge deal because I don't have it ever use, like, replace the main image. So now I can go back to step two and I can say run. So now how I envision this is that as I'm running these steps that I can, you know, a lot of times when I'm doing like 40 images, it takes about, for me, the way I have it set up, 20 to 30 seconds per image. And because of that, I know that if there's 40 images, I have about 20, 20 minutes, right? So I have about 20 minutes that I can go and do something. So if I plan correctly, I can get, you know, 100 images in there or 120 images in there, in there and I have an hour per step. And, and you're like, wait, that's a lot of time because you can't do anything else on your computer or you have to use it on an alternate computer, one of the two. Well, for me, that's not the end of the world because I don't mind. I'll go exercise, which I need to get doing more. I'll go do dishes. I'll go make dinner, whatever I need to do, right? So I can run this while I'm doing other activities that are not at the computer. So I have no problem with that whatsoever, that it takes the time that it does. And I'm just going to show you this one, and then we're going to go ahead, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to dive into um, the actual. So you can see it's really fast. The images are there. They are they're in, I can access them in my folders. It's all on my computer. Now you don't have to do this with just your computer, right? If you're like, man, my computer doesn't have enough space. I'm like that. I actually have an extra drive that does, that holds all this stuff. Well, you can actually connect it to, you can tell the folders, you know, if you have a folder that connects to like, um, what's OneNote maybe? No, I don't know what it is. Anyway, Microsoft's OneDrive. I guess it's OneDrive. Um, I'm sure you can probably do it with Google Drive. As long as it's synced on your computer, you should be able to access it because it'll do that. So now that 
should be done for power on a pro yes and it's done so now let me go ahead and show you in here like like this one well let's go into the one that's the etsy one since that's what we're talking about i'm gonna go in and edit it and i'm gonna show you a little bit all right so it's getting this is getting things ready so it's opening it up and again, like I said, my computer, I'm running multiple things, by the way. I'm also recording this. So if you think about I'm recording this, I have Word open, I have PowerPoint open, and I have Power Automate Pro or Power Automate Desktop. I do not have the Pro version, right? I just have the desktop version. So there's a lot of steps in here. And the reason why is because, like I told you, you have to go baby step by baby step, right? So the first thing I do is that I have the folders. When I scan them, I put them in a specific folder. So they go into this folder, and then I have to tell power automate desktop to get the files and then it names them right so it names them and i did a lot of research and i figured out so some of this is not critical like they're jpeg files anyway but just in case something else gets scanned in there which by the way something did get scanned in there the other day it was a pdf i don't want to pull those and do it right so instead i'm like okay i'm only gonna pull out jpegs and i just want to make sure just in case i scan something in there wrong like i said i did so I have it pull that and then then this is what they call a loop, right? So that for each item in the folder, so this is the folder and for each item within the folder, it's going to do all of these actions. And then once it's done going through the folder, it's then going to do these actions. Okay. So remember that it's pulling the information from the folder first. If you don't do that, it doesn't work exactly correct all the time. In fact, I think I got it to repeat the folder three times before I noticed. So you have to get the, the files in the folder. Then right here, we did a, a DOS command to open. My brother taught me this. That's what I mean by we. And that was because that's the only way I could figure out how to open each one. So again, I'm not, a, I'm not an expert at this. So I just ran this DOS command and then I have it wait 10 seconds when it opens. So I told you it takes 20 to 30 seconds. 10 seconds of that is waiting for it to open because my computer is so slow. So you could probably, you know, cut your time in half or maybe even just make it a third of the time simply by having a faster computer. And then I use short code keys. So C is for cropping, right? So then it waits two seconds. Again, I have ran this multiple variations on my computer. And as long as I'm not running a ton of stuff, which I'm surprised it did as well as it did, then this is fine. And I can probably even shorten this if I want to. But at one point I had it at like eight seconds and it, it broke it, right? So it stopped on that one because it couldn't, it never did finish opening. And there are some instructions you can put in there, but for whatever reason, it just kept breaking it. So I, I figured out that 10 seconds seems to be about the, the maximum amount of time I need, even if it gets hung up or whatever, 10 seconds usually is enough for my computer. Again, this is where you have to kind of go in there and tweak it for your own, own needs, right? So then C is for crop and then it waits for two seconds to make sure it actually does that action. And then I have a return and a return in here, which is enter, enter, but it shows up as return on here. And then it waits two seconds. And so I had to go through here and say, well, where is it hanging up on my computer and add in wait, wait periods, right? So that's one thing. Otherwise, if I didn't have to wait and if it was like instant almost, then I could be able to go through this a lot faster. I wouldn't plan on that. I think the best case scenario is one second, one second, you know, and then I have it doing all command keys in Photoshop. So this, what this does is this opens it in Photoshop. So now my computer is inside Photoshop doing what Ever is instructed and that's the benefit of this and this is also why you can't be on your computer at the same time right because you hit a button in the middle of this and all of a sudden you're gonna mess it all, all up so I just walk away like I said and then here after it's done it be, I've set up the crop in advance like I said there's probably a way where I could go in so I don't have to do the, as much prep and tell it what instructions I want like I could tell it up here before it even gets to these items, open Photoshop. And this is where it's like, it's sometimes it takes a minute. Sometimes it could take three minutes to open Photoshop, which is why I open it in advance. But I could tell it to open Photoshop and set up the parameters in advance if I knew the short codes, but I don't. And I hadn't, haven't had the time to go in there and set them. So instead I set them up myself, which is still not that big of a deal. It only takes like a minute for me to do. Oh, well, you saw less than that. So it goes through all the actions here and it has, you know, it saves the, f the file, the second file. And then, so I have an original and then the altered one. And then it goes through all of them. Does it, does each and every image. And then when it's done, it moves the originals into a new original folder for my next step. And then it moves the altered ones into their own file so I could find them and pull them in. In this case, it's an Etsy file that I have. So it moves it into the file on Etsy. 
So it's, it's really, it seems like it's super complicated, but if you were to break it down and be like, okay, how do you, how, how do you get across the room? And you had to tell somebody, Hey, take 15 steps. And then, then they go 14 and they run into the wall. You're like, okay, well I have to say 14 for them because their strides different, right? This is the same type of thing. So you can do the same thing and you can give step-by-step instructions and you may, maybe you have to tell them to go around things, take three steps and take a right. If this is the same thing you're, you're doing is you're telling Power Automate Desktop step by step what to do. And I cannot tell you how much time it has saved. So in the, an effort to keep my videos somewhat shorter, I have decided to break out step two, which is where I take the images. Of course, you can just load the, the Etsy images to Etsy. But if you're like, hey, I want to do mockups, I'll show you how I'm using my images on mockups in another video for those who are interested. And for this one, oh, I never actually did did my things. I'm supposed to, um, do my little things here. See my little, my little dude up there. So if you liked this content, <laughs> like the, put the hit the little like button. And if you um, haven't subscribed to the channel, please subscribe and hit the bell for notifications. We cover, I say we, when I say we anywhere on little biz resources, it means me as in Kim. I actually cover, you know, mostly marketing and growing your business, but I also like a lot of automation. So that mixes in. So I, I usually do marketing automation, but I will also do this type of stuff as well, where I show, um, you know, automation that helps the business function. So if you're interested in that kind of stuff, please, you know, follow me. And then you can also join our Facebook group. The link will be in the description and we have a free affiliate Again, I, but we, as in Little Biz Resources Group, eventually there will be a we. So I'm just prepping for that, right? So in the Little Biz Resources Group, you can get access to the free affiliate marketing course. It's mostly in there right now. There's a couple of videos I'm redoing, but you're welcome to, you know, join us in there. And please make sure you follow the instructions to get in. And there's, there is a mandatory opt-in, et cetera, that's to protect you. I'm not going to spam you, I promise. Um, but just hop into the group and, you know, you can ask questions about all different types of things. It doesn't have to be just about affiliate marketing. We cover lots of different topics. You know, we have, uh, one, one of our members is a Etsy top seller, you know, in the top 1% of sellers. I, my shop's actually in the top 2%. So I'm, uh, my shop does better than 98% of other shops on, on Etsy. So, you know, we know what we're doing and we like to do it. I just like to do it faster and better and less crazy. So that's what we strive to do is find out tips and, and creative strategies to be able to make our life better. So if you're interested in that kind of stuff, please make sure you subscribe, hit the notification button, like the video, and then come join me in the Facebook group. Thanks.